Eagle, sit down. Yes, master. Yeah. Here we go, here we go. No tapping on the tables, Igor. We've been told off. Um, we're going to start today's episode with a... You've got something to say there, haven't you, first? You go, you're keeping your hat on. Yes, definitely. Yeah? Okay. We haven't tested Rachel's audio levels, but it'll be fine, won't it? Rachel, say hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. Yeah. <laughs> what do we need to start with? You need to say a little something, don't you, to, aimed at me. I can't remember. What happened last time you were at, Igor? I don't know. What happened you when you were here last time? What you... would you normally say to somebody that's come... <laughs> What would you say to somebody that's come to, come to your rescue and saved your life? If somebody was to save your life and rescue you, what would you, what would you say? I would, I would give them a heartfelt thank you, send some flowers, chocolate. Yeah. Um, which, of those yeah. have you, which of those have you done so far? Um, I, I gave a massive hug <laughs> to Sam this morning. <laughs> Um, but yeah, last 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 time we recorded, yeah, um, I stayed in my car doing some Instagram, yeah, and yeah. Bear, bear in mind, I'd been home for about an hour and a half, <laughs> two hours. I'm pretty sure it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long. But um, I tried to start the car, and it just won't start. It just wouldn't start. Right. You were sat uh, on the tarmac outside, the car, pretty much outside screw fix, and my lights were on. You clearly. were the only car in the car park. Yeah. And yeah, I had to call Sam and and ask Came to rescue, Docker, Docker Docker Vehicles Inc. <laughs> to yeah, come and rescue recovery, me. Recovery <laughs> services. We jumped your car, didn't we? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was funny and was quite nerve wracking in some ways. We well, were looking that. at instructions. You, I'm just amazed like... that you, you were. I was half expecting you to just. You were calling me because you were telling me you were home safe. <laughs> you weren't. You were no. 20 yards down the road. Yes, that's it. Um, um, yeah. So anyway, on that <laughs> on that one, welcome to another idea. We are a podcast for creatives and entrepreneurs that want to level up their business. Yeah, and um, I think I think one thing I said to you earlier that I wanted to just talk about again is just to reinforce this idea that. Like we're about having conversations with people outside of your direct industry. Yes. Why do we do that, Igor? We do that because people need to see the benefits of looking at other industries and seeing inspiration from other industries rather than their own. Because yeah. it's so easy to have a look at everybody else and see how they compare themselves to each other. Yeah. But there's so much inspiration that you can get from other businesses outside yeah. of your own thing. And some of those some of those bits of inspiration might be absolutely groundbreaking. Exactly. Some of them might just be really minimal. But yeah. actually when you compound what we do, like let's say we do fifty two episodes a year, mm -hmm. if you can take one or two pieces out of each one, that's yeah. It's a huge amount of knowledge, isn't it? So that's what we're doing. That's why we're here. We are glad that you're tuning in. If you're here for the first time, thank you very much. Yes. Do all those clickety things that Igor yes, asked for. Yes, please share, subscribe. Because that's what we need. Um, and yeah, is that the admin out of the way? Yes, Let's it is on. indeed. Over to you, Igor. And today we have... Oh, I was going to bang the it. table. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to get told off again. <laughs> We've got the incredible Rachel Hurst. Thank Hi. you for being here. Hey, Rachel. Here. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Good. Thank Thanks for coming down from all the way from Sheffield. Sheffield. Was there yeah. snow on the snow on the hills in Sheffield no, today? No, not. But I did have a slight. There was frost, and I did have the panic uh, last week where I was messaging, going, "Guys, what happens if it snows and I can't get off my road?" But thankfully, <laughs> just a little bit of frost. We're all right. Merla Mer Mer rang me yesterday. We were chatting. The boss. Yeah, the boss. She was telling me off, and and suddenly she just goes. It's snowing. Oh, it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, that's going to be a journey and a half. But no, it was okay. Yeah, we went, from, we went from snow to full-on sunshine here within about half an hour. Wow. So, no, we're good. Dark good. Glad, glad that you've made it. It's great to have you here. Um, I've, you first came onto my radar a few months ago, I think, when Merla went to one of your events, actually. Yeah. So, um, in, good, in good company. Yeah. yeah we've had uh, Merla and Amy, I yeah. believe, come along from... Um, and Jess as well, former speaker, yep. in-house photographer of another idea. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, she's come along as well. So it seemed only right that I that I come here in return. Yeah. And <laughs> and just, for people that are listening, about. the Ingle Company is a... It is a um, Sheffield event series for women to connect, dine and share, is what yeah. we say. So wow. basically, we are rewriting how networking is done to the point where we don't even really like to use the phrase networking because it tends to give people the ick and quite rightly so there's nothing more <laughs> awkward so we've come up with a different way of doing things and it, we're not just coming at it from a business point of view we're coming at it from a um 
community point of view from a how do I make a new friend point of view um, so there's a lot more a lot yeah more it looks like it. an experience it on, on the face of it from what I've yeah. seen it looks like you, you're providing more than just that like you said that networking yeah so basically the idea was that we um, we start with the idea of an event but how can we enrich that how can yeah. we add levels to it and how can we make each one different so it is very much about an immersive event there's so many different layers to it beyond the initial networking there's amazing food amazing drink um there yeah is... how can me and eagle come <laughs> i was yeah. gonna say that because literally <laughs> we were talking well... about it this morning we, we were just literally saying that in good company looks absolutely yeah, amazing. amazing great aesthetic look at that instagram account again great aesthetic look at the events amazing how can we get in there yeah <laughs> we've had this quite a bit we are waiting for someone to do in amazing company and it come from a male point of view so we're waiting for someone to try and do the idea and just make it a lad thing instead. Although we have spoken... I'd, I'd be happy just being a waiter, if I'm honest. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. I just want to go to one. Just, just absorb great. the good vibes. Yeah. That is a good way in. That is a good way in that might work. But yeah, it's yeah a lot of layers to it, a lot of collaboration, um, the way that we work. And it's... Um, I would say it's, there's, it's not just the networking side of things, business point of view. It's actually similar to what you guys do here in terms of it's a community it's a support network it's where people can interact with each other that they wouldn't normally take things away from other people that they wouldn't normally um but also just making it a real feel good event real we say time for oneself because that can be hard to do something that's just purely for you um you know that you look forward to that you go to yeah um and yeah and where, where did the idea come from how was that so, how was that formed that bubbled away in lockdown between myself and my best friend Nick. And we had, like everyone else, a million different um, walks, because that's all we could do at that point, walk. So we did a million different walks. And this idea kept coming back, because at that point as well, everyone was craving like interaction, seeing other people. And we were like, when it comes back, how can we bring people together? Um, and also we'd both entered different stages of our lives at that point, sort of uncharted waters for us. So Nick had recently become a mum and I'd gone freelance. So we're, all of a sudden we're cast out into these different areas of our lives where we don't really know exactly what we're doing. We're trying to find our feet and having some support or having someone to lean on at that point is massive, but how do you find those people? And also, you know, Nick didn't want to be having a conversation shouting over a toddler group. Equally, I didn't want to go to a really dry networking event either. So how could we find these people? So this is when the layers started coming into it. And we said all the way through, it's recognizing that it's really hard to make friends at different points in your life. How do you do that? And especially for people who've moved, like obviously a city, you know, you get a lot of new people coming into that. How on earth do they find people, especially if they've moved for work, you know, and they don't, that, that is literally their only Not connection. just find people, but find the right kind of people, isn't it, as well? Exactly. So we, yeah. you know, we're all about saying like-minded people yeah. because the way that our branding is how we reach people that draws a similar type of people. I mean, obviously there's diversity within that, but it, you know, it's a lot, a lot of creatives, a Not lot of freelancers. No. 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 <laughs> no. We need to change that. Yeah. <laughs> that is the only thing. Can you tell we've got an issue? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the spin-off yeah. to come to you, to wait for the spin-off event. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's... I'm just going to go down the charity shop and get a, get a nice wardrobe together and just, just try and miss it out, miss it out, fire it. Yeah, I know. Well, we probably wouldn't stop you at that point. Either. We're not confrontational. <laughs> so give it a whirl. But uh, yeah, and yeah, it was the awkwardness around the friends thing as well. Yeah. We said, you know, even when you do feel like you've made a friend as an adult, it's even saying to someone like, oh, such and such, my friend or my new friend. It's, there's so yeah. much awkwardness and cringiness around yeah. it. Like, why, why is that? So, yeah, so it's a way of bringing people together in a real, really relaxed, enjoyable environment and then just seeing what goes from, from there. But like, the main part of that is a, a panel conversation, a bit like what we're having now. And we say it's, it's touching on navigating life from a, a woman's point of view. Um, but it touches on everything. It touches on career, me time, your cheerleaders, your support network, when to say no, when you've had enough, all these things. So every single person... Rather than room, just people in a room just handing out business cards. You know, <laughs> yeah. Which is like kind of like the 1990s networking, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And like everything else has evolved. So why hasn't networking yeah. evolved? And, you know, we're all about 
it, again, it, it's the human interaction as well. Like we're all on our phones. We're all, you know, we do a lot of stuff digitally, but it, seeing people in person and having conversations in person is just so much like it's magic. It's magic. It's really good. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm sold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that, with that. Yeah. Mrs. That Fire Away or an amazing company, whichever way you want to do it, with that. Um, I feel like I really want to get to know you. So tell me a bit more about you, how you started your career, because obviously you do copywriting mm -hmm. with your business here for it. I mean, it's yeah. really clear she does copywriting. Yeah, it? for us, it, it, is, it, it but, is. Yeah. But I just want the you've audience definitely, to you've know. You definitely more. won the, word, the, 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 the highest word count of the, uh, the four. <laughs> have I stolen your line? Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But um, oh, just hurt. tell us what. Oh, yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Ooh. It's a pinch, that was. <laughs> Got it on camera. Uh, so. I said it's, um, yeah, it, I can't fill in a brief form. I don't know what, <laughs> it appears I don't know what a summary is. It's quite difficult. So yeah, so I'm a journalist by trade is what I say. So that's where, that's what I'm trained as. So, uh, and qualified as. Um, so when I was, um, after doing A-levels, instead of going off to university, like what everyone else did, um, I went down the journalism route where the industry qualification is something called um, an NCTJ and then later an NCE. So um, you do a year at college and then you do two years on the job and then you do final exams. So it's kind of works like an apprenticeship. Um, there are certain universities that do it, but there's not many that are accredited for the full course. So often people come out and feel like they've wasted three years and then have to go and do another qualification on top of it. <laughs> so I kind of went around that. So it, at 19, started news reporting um, locally, regionally, which now I look back on it and I'm like, I, like, how did I not have any fear? Because I'm a worrier by trade, like I just, I just worry. Um, and I'd go off to court cases, I'd go off to inquests, I'd go and knock at Strange's doors, I'd turn up at crime scenes. And now I'm <laughs> like, I will yeah, never amazing. do it. I, w I don't know how I did it, but I, I don't know. I just, I guess you want to make a good impression. A bit of naivety when you... at that age as well, maybe? A bit of... Yeah. I think it's the whole thing like... that age, you can't... At that age, you can't... Well, yeah. 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 There's a lot of things, aren't there, on going through your you know, going through your mind at that, at that age. Yeah, exactly. There's definitely a sphere. It's like, you know, if you go to the dry ski slopes and all the kids just go whizzing by you, they don't care. Yeah. Or like at Alton Towers, they just get on the rides, but you're thinking, how much damage could I do to myself as yeah. an adult? It's that whole, you're a lot more like scared yeah, we're when you're young. now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I like went off and did all this stuff and I did really enjoy the news report inside. Um, but I kind of, was always more on the, the human interest side of things and longer form writing, funnily enough, so feature writing. Um, so from there, I ended up going into features instead, working more on like lifestyle articles and then weddings, uh, which is where I got into like involved in and interested in the wedding industry as well. So quite a big proportion of my journalism um, career has been spent on the wedding side of things so I worked for a wedding blog called Brides Up North and we had a, a magazine as well called Unveiled Magazine um, so I after doing a stint in PR I did DPR as well for a while I went full-time with Brides Up North and Unveiled um, so writing everything from real weddings to uh, trend reports to uh, interviews with lead designers and suppliers and um, doing photo Quite shoots. Quite contrast from uh, knocking on strangers' houses. Yeah, yeah in the middle of Mansfield. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It really was. And once I'd had a taste of that, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. not that bothered about that. I'll, I'll go down that route instead. So, yeah. So then ended up in the wedding industry which I absolutely loved like the people in it the creativeness that's in it um just just loved everything about it and worked, like worked hard at that job we were a small team so uh, we held events all through the north of the country as well wedding shows um so we had to work hard because we were only a small team kind yeah. of wheels came off if we didn't so um but when the pandemic hit um obviously pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> no, you feel like you don't even want to say that word anymore because people are one board are hearing it, but it is like, oh. Um, the industry got obliterated, which was horrible, horrible to watch. Um, you know, and they, they just, at first, you kind of, you get furloughed initially and you think, oh, this is all right. Like we were having a kitchen fitted and I just got up, which reminds me, have you got your kitchen now? Uh, no, yeah, it's on the cards. Yeah. Uh, are you well, still I've got no in... kitchen at the moment. 
Well, we're in that phase. We yeah, we had no kitchen for three, four months because wow. our kitchen got delivered on the day that they announced lockdown. Wonderful. Yeah. So when you said about that and how much cardio it was, I was like, yeah, got got a worse story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you win that one. Yeah, and we just got a puppy as well, and she kept going underneath all the kickboard, the, whatever kickboards were left, yeah. and like eating wires and stuff. So, but yeah, so getting filled at first to deal with that was yeah. kind of that was fine, you know, that was all right. We were all on a little. It was only going to last a month. Oh, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set you out of office. I'll pick that up yeah, when I get was. back. Let's yeah. all have a little holiday. Let's all have a little holiday. Little, holiday. Oh, it? incredible. Yeah. Absolutely when you look incredible. back now, it's just like, whew. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know how we even got through, but th that was it as well. The more time it went on, the more my anxiety was going through the roof. Mm. And, I, and I can remember saying to my husband, like, what if there isn't a job to go back to? Or what if something happens to my job? And, you know, they're like, that won't, that won't happen. That won't happen. But obviously it just went on and on and on. And kind of being a blog and a magazine, we, we were a step behind everyone else. Like yeah. when the wedding suppliers got back on their feet, when the events industry got back on their feet and they yeah, got working again. you need content. Exactly. So w it was going to be a longer journey for us getting going again. And what would that look like? And you kind of initially in those early stages, you definitely thought, well, when it comes back, it comes back. But mm. we had several knockbacks, didn't we? So we're like, oh yeah, we're off again. Like we can go. And then, you know, and then it was no... And it was kind of like, how long will that go on for? So really at that point, um, you know, there wasn't, the work wasn't there and we didn't know how long it was going to take. So I decided to be bold and go freelance, which... I think it was one of the things that really stood out in your form for me that, that I took away as being like a really kind of a standout sort of little section was that you kind of talking about that, that process of becoming a freelance and just going for it. And it was kind of, I think a conversation you had with somebody around what's the worst that can happen mm, yeah yeah and you you basically described that what was the worst case scenario and they were like well that's that is now that is yeah. that's happened yeah exactly yeah, so it's like you losing your job was yeah. the worst case scenario and that that was the turning point that was where i was like well it's okay i'll go freelance like i've got the skill set i'll go freelance and it was and i think in certain industries that that always is an option in the background but everyone you know it's so hard to walk away from a salary and i, I love my job like i didn't you know, it wasn't that I wanted to leave where I was. So, yeah, they're going freelance, but those, as anyone knows, going into freelance, so especially the first few months, it's just wave, wave, and you're up and you're down, you're up and you're down. And so I, I spoke to a coach, that was it, I had like a free coaching session, and spoke to a coach, and she, she said that, she said, like, well, going into this now, what's the worst that can happen? Or what's the worst you ever thought would happen to you? And I was like, you know, having no job, basically, there being no job. And she was like, it's already happened. Like, the only way is up now. So you may mm. as well think that that's the only way you can go. Um, and so, yeah, so I started, you know, I was, I was fortunate that I already had contacts. So just through Instagram, even letting people know what I was doing, I was very fortunate that I got clients quite quickly and at a difficult time. Um, but yeah, I started, so I started to offer a host of commercial and editorial, um, writing services really. So everything from content creation to copywriting to, um, editorial journalism pieces as well. I still do. So did you literally in some ways start he here for it there and then, or did you start it beforehand sort of like on the side and then? through the pandemic, all right, I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone and then go for it. Yeah, it was, um, I started I started it on the side for just, a, when I knew that I was gonna be sort of building up towards going for it, I just started to yeah. get a website together, put yeah, that's it, that's out, it. like yeah. just steady in the background. We love that. Yeah, and then, and then, yeah, but then it, it did kind of, it was one of those where it was, it was a little bit sink or swim. The only thing that was, I guess, helpful for me at the time because the world was shut down you weren't spending as much money and mm. you know so it did allow me to sort of get going with not as much financial pressure on my shoulders as someone might have had doing it you know two years previous to when I did it so or even now with the uh, energy bills <laughs> but um, at that point I could I, it wasn't there wasn't as much of a finan uh, financial pressure and I think that really helps I think that's when you can really feel the overwhelm and lose your head a bit when you're feeling up against up against that so it gave me a chance to reach out to the right people people that I wanted to work with because that was the other thing as well and I think there is some of that you you do definitely that I guess you guys probably the same but like take 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 that work in those first few months yeah um 
which led to burnout pretty quick. But um, but at the same time, I was prepared to set my stall out and say, this is what you know, this is what I want to do. This isn't what I what I'm here for. This is what I'm here for. But um, and so it yeah, I could. I took time to sort of reach out to the right people to start with because I just thought, well, why not? you know, get in contact with them first rather than panicking, get in contact mm-hmm. with people first. These are the services that I offer. Can I, you know, can I help you with any of this? And thankfully those clients came in, so. And this, this like three month idea as well, that things are really like tough over the, like, does that, like, does it get easier after three months? I don't. I, I mean, I'm like 10 or 12 years yeah. in and I'm like still, <laughs> still, I'm still feeling that. I was just about to say that, you tell me, does it, does it get no, easier? No, it doesn't, I don't know if it does. I mean, I think it just goes through waves, don't it? I think That's you it. kind of, you you take the you take the highs with the lows I think and you kind of just accept and that. I think the pressures change really that's the thing yeah 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 so we we you did you feel like you were kind of would I, I suppose I'm intrigued to know would you have ended up going down this path even if it wasn't for that do you think that I you, needed a push you needed that push yeah, yeah. it was in the back of my head because I, th- I don't think the timing's uh, there's never a right time no. to do anything like no. that is there I think there's always a kind of a moment of yeah clarity you've to, yeah you've kind of got to either go for it or you don't and yeah i suppose that's just kind of when everything lined up for you at that time but yeah yeah exactly no and i think um you know the episode that you guys did about the like what they don't tell you about being self-employed yeah they're all the things that you learn very quickly going into it and you're like oh no one i've got to do my tax this and, is hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and i've got to promote myself and you know there's there's so many jobs around the job itself, mm. isn't there? Like that's the thing, and I like keep a timesheet of obviously what I'm working on because that's how I obviously charge the clients the hours that I work. And I can look at my hours that I've worked at the end of the month, and it look like nothing compared to how long I've been sat at my desk because there's everything else that goes yeah. around that. So, and you, you're not aware of that until you're in it. So you've just kind of got to get in there and do that. But I think one thing that definitely helps you navigate that is is a support network is having people to speak to and whether that's one person that you know that's um that's freelance or whether that is finding a podcast like this or coming to an event like ours like but it's somewhere where there are people you can resonate with and you Uh, realize exactly that like we're all we are all in the same boat and we all go through these things and even if people look like they've got it all together on the surface then (laughs) yeah you know often that's not the case just in terms of productivity, have you ever heard of a Pomodoro timer? Oh my God! So, so <laughs> thank you, yeah, thank you. I've been, how, how, how many, how many affiliate, um, how, affiliate how many affiliate sales have you made this week, Igor, on your on your I've Pomodoro had a few timer? DMs. I've had a few DMs. Yes. I have to say, I didn't know that it had an official title. I was, but I'm all for yes. So I've been trying to do this, and um, because before Christmas, one thing I was struggling with was distraction and I've never really suffered from that before. Mm. I've always been sort of make, like, like mega focused. Yeah. yeah, like can do it, but I was darting from one thing to another. It was distracted within my own work. So I might even just dart from one client to another client and then distractions around that on top of, you know, looking at your phone or whatever that might be. And so, and then I'd heard something that week about how bad multitasking is for you. Mm-hmm. And obviously we're all like, that's a great skill if you can multitask. But it was saying how essentially your battery goes down twice as quick um, than if you just focus on one thing and then stop and then move on to the next. So I was like, well, how am I going to sort this out? So this is where I started doing. I tend to try and work 45 minutes. So Ooh, you're a bit more hardcore I'm, than I'm, I'm building, 45 minutes. I'm building yeah. my... My focus. Are you an ambassador? For, are you an ambassador for them? Yeah. No, no. Sam, you. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I think it works. I think it's a good thing. But I, I think for writing, you need a bit longer to get into the flow yes. of it. Yeah, if I, I was imagine. breaking off every twenty-five minutes, I feel and like. And I can imagine yeah. right, like crossing over between clients. It's probably a da- that's dangerous territory, exactly, right? Exactly. If you've written a paragraph in a. <laughs> body of coffee so I bang the table if you've written a paragraph around something that's a totally unrelated topic and just mixed it up yeah. you're, you're going to be in a spot of bother aren't you yeah that's it and I think as well that was the other thing learning about how much work you can fit into one day as well um, I mean I follow different writers and stuff on Instagram and they'll be like you shouldn't write for more than four hours a day and you know and you're like well I need to write yeah. for four hours <laughs> yeah. that's not going to yeah. cut it but another thing that I was doing in the it was like saying, I'd like to just go. To, I'd like to go to Bali just to write my uh, memoirs. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just gonna just. Oh, great! Yeah. Yeah. 
no problem. That's not a problem. Exactly. But then you're like, well, that's not going to pay all the bills. No. So I'm going to have to write longer than that. But what I, what I do is perhaps work on something for a client in the main body of the day. And then I'll be like, oh, well, now I'll just do a little bit on that. But again, that was really wiping me out. And I think probably creatively as well, because I've got to switch voice, switch format, switch narrative, all mm-hmm. those things really quickly. And I think it was just draining me. So it's more things that you, you learn as you go along. So now I just try and plan in one main task, one main piece of work. And I might work on a little bit of something else. Some, um, believe it or not, I can write um, smaller pieces of content because I do social media. So <laughs> <laughs> can, can do captions. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I might do something like that that just um, kind of eases things. And you know, yeah. But generally speaking, I think it's re- it is realizing how much you can produce in a mm. day. You, you can't will will that. copywriters be out of job soon with AI? Is that is that on the horizon? How far off is that? Well, it's What's a very the... controversial thing to say to a copywriter. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what that's what that for. GDT. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I, 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 I've, I've, I said to, I was chatting in the photography group the day, and we were talking about how adverts now are being really. Uh, I can, I can see the AI adverts. Every, every one or two advert now is a, mm. you know, a, a chat generator. You know. a a brand advertising generator you know it all seems to be going that way yeah. i just kind of wondered yeah. how that how that impacts how I, that impacts you how it impacts your industry yeah i think that i think that that can go across all industries i think you know we see it with the likes of canva for designers yeah. even like my husband he's a software engineer there's now certain bots and whatnot that can that can build yeah, you know, just software. spit out code. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you kind of like all these skills that we've all learned are being replaced by robots. I told you, Sam, Skynet is coming. I know, it is, yeah. <laughs> just backing that up. But it is, yeah, I think, I think it is a worry in a lot of industries. However, I think especially the, the type of writing that I do, especially for clients, um, and th- I think this comes back to sort of journalism background as well it's getting your personality into it and that's how you connect with people and that's your brand and so we don't all want to sound the same we don't all want to be generic and you know if it's website content and things like that you really need to get to the bones of who you are and get your personality across and get that across really quickly what you offer for someone so I I don't I think it can be good for certain things like I've heard people say um you know, for just generating certain emails or even like if they need prompts to get going on something. But I think, I think there's still a place for... Yeah. I've got no experience of it yet. I, I suspect it will, I, I mean, it could prove us wrong. I suspect it will read and feel like it is generated. Yeah, like yeah. You, there's no way a, an AI generator can understand... No, exactly. ...your personality and quirks and, and yeah. how your, you know, the tone of your voice. I, I don't, could yeah. be wrong. But yeah, it's an it's interesting I think they where will. it'll go. I think it's they will eventually because it's just getting better and better. Yeah, it's it's quite scary in some ways, but yeah, it is. But like I say, I think it is that whole. It's it's in nearly every industry. Like yeah. we're all mm. kind of we've all got these great skill sets, yeah. and yet you, you know, it's at the same time it just makes me think. Like you said, Sam, um, there there will be certain things that just won't be translatable, and I think. Business that, businesses that are clever like that will be able to set themselves apart really mm. because I think that yeah very very businesses that are perhaps starting out and whatever else will will go into AI generators because it's the easiest thing to do in some ways and just whoop, just yeah. go for it mm. whereas someone that really trusts someone like you in what you do in your craft and everything else um, they will go for you and, and really you will find the nitty gritty and really find their unique voice in order to yeah. put that at the forefront of their business but which made me think in some ways what if if I come to you let's say yeah as a photographer let's use it as a case yeah. really in, in some ways if I come to you as a photographer and I want copyright for my business and and my new website let's say what would be sort of like the steps that you would do in order to kind of like get my my voice across really and yeah i yeah. think um again going back to journalism background like research is always really important so it's looking at 
what you've already got out there, how you communicate with people, say like your Instagram, like what is your tone of voice? How do you come across? Because looking at both your websites, you're both very different in the way that you come across. Mm. And from your personalities, you can see that as well. So I feel like Sam's is very like, like go, 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 sort of off the cuff. And I can see you at a wedding kind of (laughs) darting from place to place and getting those different angles. Whereas I feel like Igor's more kind of, cool calm considered you both produce amazing work but i think we know who your favorite is it's all right (laughs) (laughs) but i think it does come across like both yours your personalities are in there you can see that so the only way so if i was writing something new for you i'd already be looking at that and how you know how are you already communicating Mm, but then it is a um, I prefer where possible to meet people in person, but it might be, you know, a Zoom call or whatever to chat through. Um, it, you know, it's everything. It is all those questions. It is, you know, who is who is your audience? Sometimes it's who is your audience now, mm. but who is your ideal audience? Because some people That's are so trying true. to yeah, get into a different... Yeah. Yeah, get into a different lane. So how do I make that move? These are the people that I am attracting, but actually these are the people I want to be attracting. How, you know, how can I shift my voice and my offering to do that? Mm. Um, and then it's core values it's you know it's your specialities your usps what makes you tick um how other people describe you how other people um describe your work what extra offering you give and that's beyond you know i don't necessarily mean like oh take you get- that ai yeah, Do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> now come at me but yeah no this is it it's there's a lot of like deep diving into you know the person and everything else that makes that makes them up because I think the most important thing now as well like to try and stand out is your personality Mm. is your branding that's really important and I think sometimes people just think that that is a logo in their images but you know words go a long way with that it's more to layers isn't it yeah yeah you've got to get across quickly like who you are and what you offer and why someone's going to pick you over someone else I think. I think <laughs> studio ninja Igor. <laughs> here we go now i'm off again but I, I wanted to i just wanted to talk about one more thing because i think and i'm not here to criticize one of our sponsors but i think they're missing a trick Ooh, shots fired tell yeah. us yeah tell us what so you they think. are it's it claims to be designed by photographers for photographers which Mm -hmm. it is it is designed by photographers for photographers i'm not arguing that but it's not just for photographers that's it so i just think it's for any anybody that's in a service-based industry this this piece of software is invaluable i've had friends that are muas hairstylists florist stylists you know you, you name it i've had them all reach out and i've given them sort of guidance and setting them up that have gone on to use studio ninja and like this is invaluable for our business yeah so um if studio ninja are listening and watching this back might want to think about who you're targeting it yeah, to because actually yeah, yeah. I think it's I think they're missing a trick. I think Go there's a whole the market. There's a whole market out there that you know you don't just need to be a, f- a photographer or a videographer in the wedding industry. If you are a service-based industry and you've got clients or couples, whoever they may be, and you need to book people in, you need to send them automated emails, invoices. Um, you know the system and the software is yeah. there for for anybody to use in, in in whichever business they're they're operating in. Yeah, get Studio Ninja. There you go. So, so what's the discount people... code, Igor? Oh. You should know it by now because I've told you a few times. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I wonder what I'm it could be. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> um, I'm joking. It's another idea. It's that simple. So if you go to Studio Ninja, um, type in that at the checkout and you'll get 50% off for the whole year and you'll get the first month free. You get the first month free and then another idea gets 50% off their first annual subscription. There we go. There you go. Sorted. Go, go get it. You struggle to write copy. I, yeah. I, I get I get that question a lot. Like, you know, where do where do I start? What do I do? And I, I don't really have any advice for them because I'm not a copywriter. What what would be like your kind of for somebody that's trying to just keep it in house and just get off the ground and kind of do their own bit of copy for their site, for example? Like, what are their kind of what would be like the the sort of beginning processes and, and those early stages of just starting to pad out a, yeah, a bit of a framework? Think... And, and what what are the kind of the traps to avoid? Like, you know, you talked about wanting to move into a different lane and appeal yeah. to a different audience. What, how, how, do, how do people do that? What, what are the... I think um, part of it is, it depends what copy they're doing. Um, if, it's, if it's blog content or something like that, you know, you're wanting to add a blog section to your website and um, 
whether that's for an SEO reason or anything else. But I think that that is more about making sure that what you are writing is ticking a box. So whether that's providing inspiration, providing education, providing value, you need to have something to talk about. Um, and But I think on that, like you don't need to overthink it because especially blog is more conversational. So literally as if you were telling somebody like telling your friend you know if you're um a dress boutique or something like that well how would i go about finding the right designer for me or how would i um uh you know what can you help me with like picking my wedding venue or any of these things make it conversational um try and break it up in between as well um use if it is things like that use images as well to break it up and to um you know uh reflect the story that you're trying to tell I think if it's website content or anything like that and I have to say one of the hardest things is writing about yourself I don't like writing about myself I believe it or not find it difficult (laughs) to write about myself um but again I think it's I think it is breaking it breaking it down into those you know ask yourself some questions who do I want this to appeal to um how am I going to get my personality across like what is my branding um but I think it's getting things down on paper because you can always tweet from there. The hardest mm. thing is starting it. So I always say, just start writing. And sometimes as well, like you could get someone else to look over that afterwards anyway. So it mm. hasn't got to be absolutely perfect. It's just getting going with something. But if you do really, really struggle and, or you have no interest in it, um, there are people, not just me, but there are other people that you can outsource that to as well. And I yeah. think people don't necessarily realise that. So it is worth bearing in mind that if it is something you absolutely detest or can't do for any reason. Yeah, the I think it's a good exercise to, just yeah. to do, it, especially when you're starting out. I think it's an important task to, to go through. Yeah, I think I, I think when I've read people's copy before, I, that I think have made mistakes, it's when they try and they try and write in a very formal way. Yeah, That's exactly and it's just remembering yeah. that you're not, you know, it's not you're not writing a, a job job you know job letter here it's you know, you're trying to appeal to yeah you know, your, said, your clients just, yeah the, i think conversational yeah. is, is yeah. the key isn't it yeah. yeah and i think you don't need to go into too much detail in that first bit either and also the whole um you know about me that people can get stuck on it's definitely nice i i think it's a, a good way to engage with people to you know say something about yourself get your personality across yeah. yeah but there's also this element of what can you do for the other person at the other end and it's not forgetting that it's not just me 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 the yeah. whole thing overall is what you're going to do for that person or why they're going to pick you so i think yeah. that weave that in i think one thing one thing i've i found really useful just from whenever i've sat down to write copies to it's, it's that blank page thing isn't it of like just sitting down and having a blank mm. page right in front of you one thing i was just, just like just sort of jot down some rough ideas yeah, yeah. so well, if, I'm, if i'm going through if i'm going through a blog post it's just go back through the images that I'm going to post and just think about what were the key parts of that day? What yeah. stood out? What are the stories that you can tell? You know, rather than just being about, I've got to tag this venue. So it's got to be all about the venue and the location. Yeah. Well, that's just, no one's going to read that, are they? No. Um, and I think that's just it as well. Like it, it, people get so hung up on the SEO side of things now. And that, you know, that is important. That's how we can nothing get worse seen. is there than reading a copy that's <laughs> clearly SEO <laughs> targeted. Key word jam packed. That's the thing. And, and it's a turn off and people you know, can tell. Um, it was such a pleasure to become a Miami wedding photographer <laughs> <laughs> that evening. In Miami. <laughs> In Miami. <laughs> exactly that. And I am a photographer. Like, it, it, repeating the same words over and over and just cramming it full of keywords. Well, one, like, Google is quite sophisticated. It can sort of weed that out and, you know, see that that's what you're trying to do anyway. But also, yeah, you want to make it interesting because the longer someone stays on that page, it's better for your SEO anyway. Mm. So if you can engage them um, and keep them on there, then that's much better than just throwing a load of keywords in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm waiting for you. (laughs) I was going to say that. um, I wanted to rewind a little bit, really. Um, Having been at Brides Up North and Unveiled Magazine as an editor, um, I just wanted to hear some, some of your sort of like takes in terms of what you found in terms of the wedding industry and you mentioned open days and wedding shows as well Mm. so my mind literally straight away went into sort of like audience mode right now it's january people are probably doing that in the sense of thinking about what wedding venues are going to have open days what wedding shows can they go to um so that said any sort of like tips that you would give to 
photographers or even vendor suppliers in general really that's that's the main one really um that are looking to try and get themselves within those wedding shows or open days and how to make that happen and things to look out for in some ways have yeah. you ever done an open day it's coming oh yeah it's coming at the one. end of this month yeah oh, wow, wow. i never thought i would say i would yeah. do it but yeah yeah it's a venue that I actually oh, have a relationship we'll chat about with that later you know it so, yeah. yeah all right nice yeah yeah have you done any no stuff? never done one no. no they're they're not for everyone and sometimes like people manage to get get going without them um but then they certainly do have a place as well and can help a lot of people get mm. foot in the door and get going i think um in the early days um especially if you're just starting out it's a great way not only to meet couples but to make connections to venues and to fellow suppliers as well which can lead to collaborations photo shoots so it kind of builds on there but um, first and foremost, I'd say look for a wedding show that's going to appeal to you and your aesthetic and your um, client. Mm. So that might be a certain venue. Like you say, it might be certain venues that you want to work with if they're held in an open day. Great. You know your people are going to be there. That's a great place for you to be. Um, otherwise, you know, there are kind of themed wedding shows as well. So you'll get the likes of Most Curious um, and uh they're more about, obviously, again... Alternative. Alternative, exactly. There's the unwed. Um, they're more um, kind of the cool couples, you know, the no chair covers. Not that that's really much of a thing anymore, but this whole thing is where they came from, which is great as well. So, again, if you align yourself with those type of people... The, the me and Sam got wanna... married. That would be that would be a what chair covers? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no alternative. <laughs> alternative. Um, and then there's more mainstream shows as well. Um, you know, there's the big shows. There's the big like Northwest shows. They're huge. Like you'll get so many different couples coming from there. So again, it's thinking about what first and foremost. I think think where your audience is going to be mm. or the person that you want to target is going to be. In terms of actually attending the event, try and stand out for one. Like sometimes you know you'll just get given like a trestle table or something like that and some people just put a cloth on it put a few wedding albums Go on it, it. <laughs> and expect, expect the bookings to flood in exactly like you want to stand out and it also like that is your space so yeah. do your thing in that space so you don't even need that table you know you can have like crates you could bring your own table you could bring a dresser you know you could bring a deck whatever fill the van kids exactly. fill the van <laughs> exactly fill it but just make sure that you've got enough space from the person because there's nothing worse as an organizer when someone rocks up with a massive van and you're like you've got six foot like what yeah. where are we gonna put all this stuff so yeah get creative with it think you know how can you how can you make it different because that's going to draw people to you definitely definitely don't hide behind your stand either the amount of people that will book into an event and then just hide and it can seem like a scary thing but these couples haven't been dragged there kicking and screaming like they want to be there they've come for a reason so it isn't hard sell in that way don't don't go at it from a hard sell point of view you're just there to meet people to chat you know to say what you do so i think that's a great thing as well as trying to collect some data on the day perhaps as well that's really good. Uh, yeah that's a great shout yeah one way or another so you've got a way of getting in contact with those people as a follow up a personal follow up will probably go a long way especially like if you can make a little note or something next to that person you know it might be that they've told you the venue that they're getting married or oh it's on this particular special day or mm. something like that you've got an in then to go back to them with to follow up with that's going to make that's going to put you above someone else, mm. basically. So I think it'll be it's... a bit more personal, won't it? I was, exactly. I was literally going to say personal. See? It's all about personality, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just remember, I think if you're really, if you're at one of those events and you're a bit scared, you just go and stand in front of it and just smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and hope for the best. <laughs> you should Not see Sam's face right obviously now. Don't look like <laughs> it's amazing. Don't, you know, don't look like a creep. But just go and smile and just chat to people. Yeah, and almost like let go of any expectations. I think. I think yeah. people probably just. They go there expecting it like to be like their their year, their calendar's gonna get booked up and they're gonna be beating away customers. And actually just if you just go there and just kind of just expect to like just have a conversation with people, it's yeah. gonna be far more exactly. beneficial, isn't it? And there'll be people there that are at all different levels of their like wedding planning as well. Yeah. So, you know, if you're a photographer there and you're getting early like you're getting just engaged people coming through the door, that's pretty good for you because you're one of the first things they book. But you could be um a decor company or you know a lights company or something like that and actually they might be more of an add-on or something that they get mm. to later on so again don't be disheartened by that either like not everyone 
is going to be not everyone's going to be your person but also not everyone's going to be in a position to yeah. to you know be booking you at that time yeah. is it worth offering any kind of incentive like regardless of whatever industry you're in you know if you're a florist or a photographer yeah. or whatever it might be to uh, are incentives or you know like sign up today or you know, within, yeah five percent off. Know, is that is that something that people should consider yeah i mean i think people have done that in the past or they'll do some sort of competition is in terms of that they take all the data and then a winner will be picked and they would get x amount off or they mm. might get a free engagement shoot or you know whatever it might be other people if there is a a, a goodie bag or something like that 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 the couples get on the way free through stuff. the door. <laughs> Give them free stuff. <laughs> everyone loves a bit of free stuff. But if there is something you can put in that bag, it might not be for everyone, but certainly, you know, someone who makes cakes, for example, or things like that, there might be something that you can put into that bag, again, that will make them remember you, so you're going to stand out again. And then the beauty, again, with that is that everyone will get one of those bags, but you might not get a chance to speak to everyone at the event, so it just means that... Here's a way... slice of cannabis cake. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Um, but exactly, there's a, it's kind of like just thinking, how can I try and reach yeah. as many people? So how can, how can you stand out? Can you be mem- how can you be memorable? Yeah. Yeah, but with that, if you are getting creative with your stand, don't rock up half an hour before the show is going to start, because that's just yeah, going to be. Calm. I can imagine that. You're going to be stressed. You're I, used be to do, um, I used to do uh, fairs, like selling clothes up and down the country, and that, that you know, we used to have a transit fan full of gear, and we'd rock up and we'd be the first ones ready to go. And uh, you'd have people turn up, you know, twenty minutes before the doors open, and you're like, yeah. you've got to empty your van, get yeah. your rails up. It's just, just be organised. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 You paid for you've paid for that space and that store. Yeah. You paid for those people to come and see you yeah. and spend money with you. And I know. you can't even be on time and punctual. But anyway, yeah. I could just go off on a rant about that one, <laughs> uh, but we won't. Any wedding shows that you've left feeling like really impressed with? Um, well, we held them. They still Brides Up North do still hold events. I'm just not there, but um, all through the north, it's some amazing venues. I think just. Um, the ven- for me the venue comes down to it a lot so I was never like one for these big wedding shows where it's just kind of like stall after stall after stall it's kind of um, the venue that's the draw so we do them at some really really interesting venues which is a great way to then be able to go and see the venue and also pick up supplies at the same time so and I think that the venue can inspire the suppliers then and what they bring to it and the creativity that they um kind of showcase on their stands as well that's really good yeah, yeah. i'm pumped um one thing that uh, just going away from that a little bit one thing that uh, stood out again in your in your copy that you that you wrote <laughs> was um you kind of talking about having all of your not having all of your eggs in one basket mm. um and i was just intrigued to kind of talk to you about how how you strike that balance between making sure that you can diversify your income streams but at the same time not sort of spread yourself too thin and to mm. be able to make sure that you can commit to each one of those eggs in different baskets I don't know does that make sense as in from my business yeah your, your, your experience yeah because yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think about I think I possibly spoke about two different baskets with eggs in yes <laughs> not two baskets but, but to start with um, yeah in terms of my own I think it's just um, thinking about kind of you've where where yeah where else you can bring the money in really so um i to my core offering tends to be blog posts and website content yep. but around that well i can offer social media content and i can do product descriptions for people and i can do press releases for people and i can help get those press releases placed in different publications and then you know we've got our events that we've launched as well that sit alongside that so I think it's, I think it's all, I think if you've got a good skill set, like don't be afraid to sort of branch out. I think we have this thing where, again, we can be told, well, you're a photographer, stay in that lane, but you know, you two are now branching out into like education and like helping others. And, and because you've got a wealth of experience, so you've got value mm-hmm. to offer and you've been there and done it and you can pass that on to other people. And I think it's the same thing sometimes it's like, well, you're a journalist or you're a copywriter, but there's so many different things that feed into that um, that you shouldn't be afraid of trying it because at the end of the day, if you try it and you don't like it, well, you just don't do it again and you know, and you know it's not for you. And I'm also, I'm not afraid to even if, you know, if I wanted the work, I always want to be the best person to do that work. So if someone comes to me and I think I'm not 
quite right like placed for it I'll be like you need someone who specializes in this or you should go to this person um so yeah I think definitely you can do other things it's thinking about your skill set and how it can cross over to different areas yeah I think it's just about kind of interesting just experimenting with things isn't it as well like you said about just giving something a shot again it's like what's the worst that could happen if it doesn't work scale it back and yeah try again Yeah. yeah exactly yeah I think the or the basket that I spoke of. Yeah. There's probably several in there, but was um, <laughs> um, in terms of your copy, not putting all your eggs in one basket from like a supplier point of view. Um, in terms of that everyone's so hot on the social media side of things. Okay. And uh, you spoke about this in previous podcasts, I'm sure, about what happens if social media just disappears? Mm-hmm. What if someone hacks your account? And even the thought of someone hacking your account makes you feel sick. Like that's just an awful thing to happen, especially if you, you know, you sell online as well, and that is your main sort of platform yeah. that you're on. I think it's this is where it's it can be really important to build a mailing list, to do a blog post, to create community, and to be able to reach your people in different ways, um, because if that social media account does get taken away for any reason or that goes down for a while like how are you reaching those people you feel like you've lost everything but by building a mailing list so that people can follow you so that you can get a newsletter to them so that you can interact with them it's a different way of contacting them you know as well if you get you know an open on that email you know that they've seen it it's a way of reaching people um and yeah building community and kind of not having all your eggs in the two one baskets one. exactly <laughs> two basket question there I like yeah that. yeah exactly yeah stuff like that that scare me um and even recently i saw a really really big account um having their their account being hacked and and it just shows that Mm. literally anyone can doesn't happen happen doesn't doesn't happen until to you until it happens happens. happens. yeah (laughs) that's it yeah um i find that good copywriters usually tend to be good readers so is there any books out there that you would recommend Mm, and they can be anything. Yeah. They can yeah. be anything. Any particular no, category? No, 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 any category? Say. As long as they're good books, like good books, books that left you like, that was great. That was mm. really good. See, I do, I tend to read either. Uh, occasionally they can be connected to it, but it tends to be either like, um, well, I should say self improvement books, not self help yeah. books, but, yeah. or, um, or it is uh, fiction. So that's two completely different. But I think um, Ruby Wax has done some great books that look at the mind, how the mind works, um, in terms of why we experience, uh, experience burnout, why we experience negative thoughts. And I think that they're really good for helping to... Sort of, it's going on a note section yeah. straight away. I know, it's not... It's <laughs> not Wax, yeah, yeah, and it's not someone I would have thought of before, but her books are really good for helping to understand that. Um, Inspired by previous guest, uh, Jessica uh, Somerville as well. Uh, manifesting, manifesting books. Why not put it out there? Yeah. Let it, let the uh, universe bring it back to you. So, um, Seven Steps to Manifesting. Roxy, can't remember her name. Yes, I know, I know who you mean. Orange uh, Cover has just brought out, yep. she just brought out another one as well. This year, her books were good. Um, yeah, I would say those, so yeah inspirational and sort of yeah just helping to is the the whole thing again that the feelings that you have everyone else has so and it's like understanding where they come from yeah that's pretty good um (laughs) as you were talking my mind just drifted off to the whole idea of i still want to go to in good company (laughs) oh god yeah (laughs) how how are we going to infiltrate that but i was going to ask i'm just going to get murder to put me in a bag (laughs) (laughs) i've got like one of those big hold doors i just Curl myself up. Yeah, and no, because seriously, it in. is really good to, to the audience. You should check it out, especially if you're a lady. Um, mm-hmm. Just check it out and and try to attend it. But I was going to ask, um, with thing with how things are in good company now, what would you like to see in the future with it? So that's a good question. Um, we we knew we knew that there was a gap in the market for what we were sort of bringing to the table. Um, but seeing the response has been crazy because we did our first one in June last year and we got over 100 uh, women there in that one room. And sell then, out. That is incredible. Sell yeah. out. 
and then Amazing. and then they've, they've continued to sell out so Incredible. we did uh, another one in october and then in um what we did in december was a different um a different format of the event so rather than um, the drinks and a sit-down meal and a um, panel conversation. We were looking at our audience. Um, who are they? What do they want? And we said a lot were self-employed freelancers and mums. Um, what sort so of industries? All different industries. But equally, we'll get people who work for the NHS, people who work for the council. But, um, well, f- like photographers, we've got um, beauty, wellness, quite a lot of people from those industries as well. Um, creatives that make so people who make candles ceramics there's, there's how do you so... get such a vast because it's a massive spectrum how do you get such a vast sort of like spectrum of of industries within one room well like, what's your marketing strategy <laughs> what is happening because we want to know <laughs> <laughs> i think we're very fortunate in sheffield that we've got a lot of great creatives in Sheffield and a lot of freelancers, a lot of um, entrepreneurs in Sheffield as well. So I think we've already got a good base to go at. But it goes back to what we were saying before, really. It's it's the branding, it's your visuals, it's the language that you're using, mm. um, speaking to their needs. You know, what do these people need that are at home all the time? Like doing a great job, but ultimately isolated. Well, they want a night out. You know, and they want to yeah. talk to people, and, and they the want branding, to enjoy themselves. Like, it is all in- incredibly welcoming, mm. and inviting, and yeah. inclusive, and just that it doesn't look like there's any kind of like judgment or no. kind of no one should fear. Like yeah. I, I think with networking, I think a lot of people are. You see this all the time, like oh, I've got, I'm going to this event, I'm really scared or yeah. worried. And it just doesn't look like you're going to get Clicky. that for yeah, yeah. And it just doesn't look like yeah. it, not, not at all. You know, obviously. No, and that's what we hoped, and that's what. That is what happens. That's why it's sold out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we, we, you know, say, we're so surprised at the amount of women that come by themselves to these events. And me and Nick will be like, oh my God, I'd never go to an event like this by myself. We run them. We thought mm. of it. And we're like, that takes some balls. Like, how on earth? And you see women come in and sometimes you can see that they're a bit nervous and you can sense that they're by themselves. But as soon as they've got that welcome drink in the hand... And I was realize, just going to say, give yeah, my glass a fizz. <laughs> exactly. As soon as they've got a drink and they see everyone's in the same boat, everyone's yeah. so warm and welcoming, people will literally just be like, oh, can I join your conversation? Yeah. And then they're away. And then like the way, the way that it works well is you've not got to fully work that room because then the next element is we have the sit down meal and the meal is at long tables and we mix up the seating plan so even if you have booked with someone else you won't be sat directly next to them because the whole idea is to get talking to other people but again everyone's in the same boat and I can remember the first event we did kind of took a step back and looked and I was like what is that sound and I was like that is just over a hundred women chatting. And yeah. like some people that might be your worst nightmare is a sound, but it was, it was just incredible. You were like it everyone. Electric, yeah. yeah, it was. There's such a vibe in the room, such an energy in the room. And like, it's the things that can come out of it. We've had so many different comments. I mean, someone just commented yesterday. It was actually something that had been posted on LinkedIn to do with In Good Company. And it was a guy that had said that his girlfriend had moved to Sheffield in 2019 and then obviously the pandemic hit and uh, therefore she hadn't got to know anyone so and he'd said however um he's like your events have been instrumental they've made such a difference to her like this has been how they've met people I think what you're doing is great and you know that's so nice. I must feel incredibly proud. Yeah yeah we do. Do do you do you get time just to step back from it and go hold on look at look at what we've done here like this is just a little conversation that you had on a walk during yeah. lockdown yeah. that you've and now just crafted into a, all the way up to an it, event that sells out. Yeah, all the way up to it, as it was getting closer to that first one, me and Nick kept saying to each other, when are we going to tell them it's a joke? Like, <laughs> yeah. When are we going to say we're not really doing this? Like, this is this is a great thing, but, um, you know, I put it on the... Something a client said to me ages ago, and I put it on the first post that we put out about um, In Good Company. And it's that a great idea will only ever be that unless you do something with it. Yeah. And it's so, so true. And it goes back to, well, what's the worst that can happen? You know, our worst that could happen was we were going to ship in our mums and all their mates on the bus from work stuff and they were going to come and fill the seats yeah. for us. So we were like, <laughs> it'll be okay, we'll yeah. make it work. Um, but, you know, that's that's what we had to do. But yeah, seeing it build now and um, people just you know, want to be involved, but going back, sorry, we've gone off a bit of a tangent. Sorry, no, that's you good. Got, that's but right, your, that's what we 
your question about like where we see it going at Christmas, we put on a Christmas party for people without a Christmas party because Brilliant. we were like, these are our people. They don't work in big companies, but they still want to let their hair down at Christmas Hell and enjoy yeah. themselves. Exactly. And we were again, we were like, this will do well. Like we're offering people prosecco and music. It's great. Like that's what they want at Christmas. Uh, and again, so we did that. That was brilliant. Like that was a sellout event. Um, and also, you see, we've started to build the community now. We're getting people coming. It's not not always the same people come back to the events, but there is an element of the same sort of similar people coming back to the events. So they're getting to know other people. Um, and so we've got an event in February, but we've also got an event to announce later this month, uh, which is going to be another sort of spin-off event. So we do our main events quarterly through the year, which follow the same format, but then we're looking for, you know, how else can we Branching serve our audience? And, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's just, it's looking at their needs and how you can fulfill that and making it different to anything else that's out there as well. I think that they're... they're I think what must be really satisfying to know, or, or to, I imagine this happens now, is that those people that go to those events that go along as single self-employed businesswomen will probably now meet up with some of the other people that are at those oh. events and mm. just go and have a coffee. Yeah, exactly. We've and, seen that. And like you've, you've formed those relationships yeah. and those connections and we've talked, we've talked about it so many times on this, you know, on this podcast around the importance of connections and networking and, and being able to kind of collaborate with others and stuff. And you've, you're obviously a, an amazing vehicle for that. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's the, the beauty in community, like the power that's in collaboration is immense. Like, and, and we, we don't only, um, you know, we have a panel conversation, but we want each event to look and feel different and we want to spotlight great people in our city. So we also work with a bunch of creatives on it as well. So each month, we're sorry, each event, we will have a different photographer that captures our event. So we've got the fabulous Merla going to do our next one. Um, but we, we have an illustrator, so each event looks a bit different. Um, we have a decor host who brings something to the table. Like each one looks and feels different, even though it's held yeah. generally at the same venue. Um, it's an amazing way of highlighting that specific artist, or yeah, that specific artist. Yeah, it? and we've yeah. Se- we've seen what comes the out of it. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like we've seen we've seen what comes out of it. We get tagged in, you know, um, pictures of people meeting up after it. Um, we've got people who we know who said they've got work they've got work out of it because they've got talking to someone. But it's not this surface level introduction this is who i am it's they are genuine connections that are being sparked in that room and that's what makes it so rewarding for us like totally and we even had it with one of the ladies who'd been on the panel so she'd actually been a speaker at our last event in october um and she herself had like had this whole um identity sort of transformation she said that from talking about the stuff that she'd done in her career and what she'd achieved and sharing that with others it'd given her a confidence that she hadn't felt in years that she'd kind of sort of you know thought um you know I'm through the main part of my career I'm you know winding down type of thing and then all of a sudden she was like no like I've got loads left to give and she dyed her hair she'd bought a full new wardrobe according to her daughter she'd like gone wild <laughs> off the back of it we were like that's amazing like if we can do that if something that we've done has helped yeah. someone feel like that that's incredible it's just amazing to hear you talk about it you're really passionate about it and you are truly empowering women in an incredible way so yeah it's really inspirational oh it's amazing yeah I, I just feel like <laughs> Yes, sir. Let's let go. go. Let's let go. go. <laughs> no, that's that's really really incredible, and I can't wait to see what else you do with in good company because you you are doing incredible things. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing. Are you can take it further afield. We've had this conversation. We've been approached by other people because I would say other people spot sort of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, for I think there's different things to come out of um, in good company. Um, in terms of what we offer within Sheffield. Myself and Nick are very passionate about Sheffield. That's why we yep. started it. Um, you know, there might be different ways of doing it. You know, you all, all different things spring into your head to start with like, oh, we could do a franchise. Mm. Or, you know, you don't know. But in order for us to take it to different cities, it would be a full-time job because obviously me and Nick are both freelancers in our um, own sort of main lines of work. We do this on the side. And it's it's quite a lot of work, you know, to keep to build that audience, to get in contact with people, to be giving them what they want. And 
we, in order to build that same community, we'd need a different social media channel for each of those areas. Yeah. You know, there'd be so much that would go into it. So there could be different events in different areas that come out of it, but for now we're keeping it in Sheffield. Um, but yeah, it's been very exciting, like the things that people have got in contact about and the comments that we've had. The so. world is your get, oyster. Get, you, <laughs> get yourself exactly. to Sheffield, people. Exactly. That's where it's at. That's where it's happening. Have you question. got your questions up? Yeah, go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You go. You go. <laughs> a question that we, we tend to have in the pod to kind of like wrap things up um, is that if the 14-year-old Rachel, um, if you were standing in front of her and giving her some kind of type of advice, what would you say? Hmm. I think one thing is like, do go with your heart. Cause I think, it, I think at that age or when you're younger, you can get pigeonholed and this is sort of where you should go and this is the re- career that you should follow. I was quite fortunate that I did enjoy writing and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue that. And I, and I did, go down that route and now I do a job every day that I really, really love. Um, and I think that from being in jobs that I've not loved, it is so important and, and such a privilege if you can get into a job that you genuinely enjoy doing. Um, I think also I'd say experience counts for so much. Like, yes, we all have exams and we all sit them, but they're not the be all and end all like the experience is absolutely priceless and it's the whole you know the not what you know it's who you know who you know can get you so far but the experience i found that from going into journalism at 19 and from just getting that experience straight away and getting into work and learning on the job that it's you know that's that served me really really well and i've been picked for positions over people who've got a first degree and something or other but because I've got the experience to actually get the job done so I think experience like get experience and just the the other thing that we said about you know being able to switch lanes don't be afraid to branch out from that but also if there is something you enjoy fashion even for example what what job are you going to do from that and where can you go with it so are you might People be like, oh, I'll be a fashion designer, but you could be, you know, the merchandiser, the window dresser, the art director on the shoots. There's so many different jobs within that industry. I think, again, I'm going back to Jessica's um, episode. Wasn't she told that she was going to be the person that put up electricity oh, pylons? Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, that well-known job. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I got. Can you imagine seeing <laughs> Jess putting a pylon? She'd be the most glamorous <laughs> person doing it, wouldn't she? <laughs> like, uh, she'd make it look good. I'm sure if she was doing it. But no, I need a Gucci helmet. So I'm not doing <laughs> this it. This one will not do. A... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, exactly. She. Um, so she said that that was her. That was what she got picked as career advice. We just didn't really have any. Didn't have any, and I yeah. think, I think it's. I think it's dangerous to a certain extent. It's daunting because you you could get into a job you really don't like. You could get into a job that I think a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah, and and do. then you feel stuck. And once yeah. you get responsibility, it's really really hard to move out of that. Yeah. Then mm. like really hard. You feel like, well, that's it now. I've just got to stay in this. But I think if you can look into that industry and find jobs that you want to do, or find something that could that you could move around in a bit more. Um, but again, if if the opportunity does come up to move lanes it is scary but at the same time like it can really pay off as well so it's just i guess having that confidence as well yeah yeah you saying about exams kind of made me just think about how you know at that age like it just dominates mm. a, a, a teenager's world doesn't mm. it yeah. yeah we all know now that you know it doesn't it's not the be on an end or no and does anyone ever ask you, know, you what those grades no, were no and actually you know like, i think a few things that have come up throughout the conversation with you is around you know, the exp- you know, you said then about experiences and those experiences have ultimately given you the life skills that you need to be able to mm. hold a conversation, to yeah. be engaging with somebody, to be able to create, a st- uh, to be able to read their story, to understand them and to be able to portray that in your in your work as a journalist. So, yeah. you know, and, and obviously now it's just developed into another sort of community aspect of, yeah. of In Good Company. So it's it's been it's been brilliant to see. I've, I've really enjoyed kind of seeing what you're doing with In Good Company. Um, I know we say about most guests, but I mean, I, you know, g- genuinely looking forward to seeing where it goes over the next 
six months, two years, five mm. years, how we're going to break into one of them. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's yeah. just, no, it's, I think what you've done is incredible. I think you should be, you should be hugely proud about what you've, what you've built within the company. Very much um, so. It shouldn't be downplayed at all. In a selfish question, um, any guests that you would recommend for this podcast? Because you are definitely someone in the know. So oh, anyone it's... that you would recommend? Could be one, two, three, four, five, yeah, whoever you want. Oh my word. Now I am on the spot. I mean, there's so, yeah, there's so many people that we've, I'm trying to think that like we've had, uh, met through in good company, but then also like in the wedding industry itself, there's some great people. I mean, the, the venue that we work with, um, in Sheffield, the Mowbray, I don't know if either of you have shot there. Um, they've got, um a few um a few venues that they've thought taken derelict buildings and turned them into like incredible things and are holding amazing events um i think you know my other half of in good company you should have her along at some part maybe in a couple of years and see, <laughs> see where get we up, are there get, see if we're still progress. smiling <laughs> yeah um and yeah i think oh, so many. I'm on the spot. I'm, like, I'm going to have to jot them down for you. Well, let's that's what I'm going to have to do. Should we go and put the heaters back on for a minute? <laughs> yeah. Um, because it has gone a bit chilly, hasn't it? Yes, it has. We'll get a drink and then you can uh, you can write some names down for us. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming down. Thanks for giving us your time. Yeah. Um, where no can people find you and, and how can they... When they put their little story on Instagram in a minute to yeah. say, hey, just listen to this episode, who are they going to tag? Um, so I am Rachel underscore here for it, Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L. And then uh, In Good Company, we are The In Good. So you'll find us at The In Good uh, online as well. So yeah, check us out. Brilliant. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've been absolutely amazing. Do you want to bang on the table? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much, Rachel.